Booker season is almost upon us, and I just wanted to discuss all the books that might make the July long list. I want to make this clear. This is not a prediction video. I will make a prediction video in around a fortnight's time. Hopefully when I do that, we'll know the actual date of the announcement, not just the month. Quite late for the Booker Prize to be telling us when they're going to announce the long list at the moment, but... So anyway, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the Booker Prediction video that's coming. This is more of a meta-analysis than it is an opinion video. I'm going to be mentioning a lot of books and it isn't going to be an in-depth discussion of any of them because that would end up being a four or five hour long video and require just so much reading from me, more so than I have ever done before. I'm going to start this video by discussing how eligibility works for the Booker Prize. A book needs to be published in the UK or Ireland between the 1st of October 2023 and the 30th of September 2024, which, as I'm sure you know, is about three months away. And last year we saw Prophet Song, a book not released when the long list was announced and that I don't think anybody was really aware of, go on to win the prize, beating out some very good books in the process. So it's quite possible that while I'm going to mention a lot of books, there's probably going to be a few on the long list that I haven't even heard of before. Now, to be eligible, a book also needs to be a connected narrative, which essentially means short story collections are not eligible. But we saw last year Jonathan Escoffrey's If I Survive You Make the Shortlist, and in 2019 the winner Girl, Woman, Other is another example of a short story story collection that is somehow connected. Publishers get to nominate between one and three books based on the number of books they have published that have been long listed in the last five editions of the Booker Prize. Beyond their submissions, they can submit up to five call-in nominations, which are not submissions, but the judges can choose to call it in. They'll have to include a letter of why the book should be called in as part of the process. And the judges are required to call in a minimum of 10 books. Even if a book isn't submitted or nominated as a call-in, the judges can still call in a book as long as the publishers agree to the rules around the Booker Prize. Apparently call-ins do quite well, although we never find out which books are call-ins and which books are nominated. So this is just gossip and gossip that can't be verified, but it does kind of have a logic to it. If you're watching this video, you're probably an avid reader. The judges, they're also avid readers. Imagine if you were a judge and the best allergy book you have read so far this year was not submitted. You'll probably want to call it in and you'll probably advocate this quite strongly for it. With the limit on how many books a publisher can submit, we saw last year on Booktube a lot of people were predicting Reamble by Priya Hines get longlisted, which was published by Indigo Press. And in the end, we saw Pearl by Sean Hughes make the long list, which is also published by Indigo Press. So, I mean, I guess Reamble could have been submitted if Pearl was called in, but it's far more likely that Indigo Press, having never been longlisted for the Booker before and only been allowed to nominate one book, picked Pearl over Reamble as their sole submission. So sometimes publishers have to make these difficult calls, which I mean is tantamount to picking between their children, I think. I mean, this all goes to show us that it is quite a complex process and the books I'm about to discuss, the books I think the judges could be reading and debating over, we don't really have a clue what books they are and it's all a bit of guesswork. But the one thing that we do know is that if a previous winner of the Booker Prize has published a book within the eligible date range, that book is automatically submitted. So let's go through the previous winners and see who has works published in the eligibility dates. So I'm going to start somewhere controversial, and that's with the 2014 winner, Richard Flanagan, and his latest book, Question 7. Noticed I called it a book and not a novel. Flanagan has written something very good, as all of his books are, but it's something that's very hard to classify. He is definitely blending fiction and non-fiction with this one, but we have seen books like After Sappho get 
long listed in the past. Question seven may very well be a step too far into non-fiction for the booker, but we could definitely have a friendly debate about whether this book is eligible or not. I see good arguments on both sides. What Will Survive Us by Howard Jacobson has got a terrible rating on Goodreads, 2.77. But his novel, The Finkler Question, which won the Booker Prize in 2010, also has a terrible rating on Goodreads of 2.83. So Goodreads ratings clearly don't mean much when it comes to the Booker Prize. Judging by this cover, this looks like it may have been marketed as a love story, and that may go some other way to explaining the poor rating. Reaching back a bit further, 1995 winner Pat Barker has The Voyage Home. Now this is the third book in the Women of Troy series, which is a psychologically complex mythology fantasy historical fiction blend about the women of Troy. It actually sounds fascinating, but I am never a fan of books in a series getting nominated unless they truly are standalone, which even if they are standalone, they're often greatly improved by having read the earlier books in the series. The 93 winner, Roddy Doyle, has a new book expected out on the 10th of September, The Woman Behind the Door. Not sure how the booker deals with expected on dates. I'm sure the publisher understands how likely the book is to be published within a certain eligibility date or, or not. But this is definitely one of the reasons why I would like to see this prize moved slightly later in the year. But regardless, Roddy Doyle is one of these authors you can never write off. He's very well thought of, super talented, and most importantly in today's literary climate, he's Irish. Of the previous winners, I think he's probably the most likely to make the long list. All the way back to 1982, and the winner there was Tom Keneally, and he has Frantic Heart, which is coming on the 1st of August, although it has already been published in Australia back in 2022. He's famous for his novel Schindler's Ark, which has had quite a famous movie adaptation. And over 40 years later, he's still writing such is the power of the Booker Prize, I guess. Now, there's a few previous winners that have books floating around that are not eligible. So just in case anybody was wondering, let me just dispel some of the books that are not eligible. The Wren, the Wren by Anne Edright was published around a month too early for this prize. Alan Hollinghurst has a new novel called Our Evenings, but it's not expected until the 8th of October, which is eight days late for the prize. You know, the words expected on, I think that usually means earliest possible date, but I guess it wouldn't be the first time I've seen the dates moved forward. Similarly, John Banville, The Drowned, is scheduled to be released on the 1st of August, like it was almost intentionally put down as a 2025 nomination. Another book by a previous winner coming later this year, although no date is mentioned, is Jan Mattel's Sons of Nobody, which is a retelling of the Trojan War. So this could be eligible depending on what date it is published, but I guess it probably isn't. Now, 1992 and 1991 winners, Michael Ondaatje and Ben Okri, both have books of poetry, A Year of Things and Tiger Work, respectively and they're not eligible because poetry isn't eligible. Similarly, 1989 winner Kazu Ishiguro's The Summer We Crossed Europe in the Rain is a book of song lyrics and not eligible. And 1981 winner Selman Rushdie's new book Knife is a memoir and hence not eligible because it's non fiction. So I think those cases are quite clear, unlike Flanagan, who um, we just don't have a clue, really. There is one other winner of the Booker Prize who is not going to be auto-nominated, but who does have a book out this year, and that is Jennifer Croft, who won the Booker International for her work translating Flights by Olga Trukatska. Her debut work of fiction, The Extinction of Irena Ray, is eligible. Moving on from winners, I guess previously shortlisted authors are more likely to have their works submitted, and I think there's going to be two big ones that everybody's going to be looking at. The Road to the Country by Shigozi Obiyama and James by Percival Everett. And I know I said that this isn't a prediction video, but if some point in the future you watch any booktuber make a prediction video and they don't either predict these two books or explain why they're not 
not predicting these two books. They're just not reliable. For me, these books are like painted on certainties. And if they don't get long listed, we're either in for a very, very good year or a very, very bad year. Choice by Neil Mukherjee, My Friends by Hisham Matar, Long Island by Colm Tobin, and The Spoiled Heart by Sanjeev Sahota are four books by previously shortlisted authors that I think are highly likely to be submitted and definitely part of the equation. One book that I'm not hearing a lot of hype around at all is Alif Shafak's new novel, There Are Rivers in the Sky. Now that's probably because it is only being released on the 8th of August, you know, two months in the future. And maybe it's not quite in people's minds yet, but I don't think anybody will be too surprised to see Alif Shafak long-listed. Elizabeth Strout, Tell Me Everything, is also not being released until September. And I guess I've made my feelings known about series already, and Strout is not an author for me, but she does do very well on these prizes. Kahoki Jazz by Frances Spufford, Parade by Rachel Cust, and Crooked Seed by Karen Jennings are uh, all novels by authors that have been either long or shortlisted recently and I guess are going to be very high up on the submission list of publishers. Come and Get It by Kylie Reid is another book by a recently longlisted author that is eligible, although I don't think it's anywhere near the standard of their previous work, Such a Fun Age. Richard Powers has a new novel, Playground, and this is a curious one because the release date for the paperback is listed as the 24th of September, but it's very weird that a paperback is being released before both the hardback and the E and audio books. And all of those things have been released in October. So I'm not sure if the listing is incorrect or it's waiting to be updated. And if this book will be eligible for this year's or next year's prize. I'm really hoping it's next year because I, I really hate it when books published in late September get long listed and we can't access them. Intermezzo by Sally Rooney is another book published in late September by a previously long listed author. Rooney certainly doesn't really need any of the hype that the booker will give her work if she gets long listed. She'll generate enough of that herself but she is very much an author who you cannot rule out. That is scheduled for release on the same day as Power's novel, the 24th of September. Baumgartner by Paul Astor is a questionable book. Astor has died since the publication of this and kind of like Cormac McCarthy last year, that means he's technically not eligible. But I'll quote the rules to you. The author of the work must be living at the time it is submitted or called in. The work will only remain eligible for as long as its author is alive through the various stages of the prize up to the time of the announcement of the winner, although this is subject to the discretion of the chief executive. So while not eligible, I guess there's definitely room for this to be nominated and win the prize. Moving on to some hyped books and Blackouts by Justin Torres won the National Book Award and is very much eligible. Praiseworthy by Alexis Wright won the Stella Prize. It was also shortlisted for the Dublin Literary Awards and longlisted for the Miles Franklin Prize. You know, it's worth noting that the Miles Franklin Prize hasn't announced their shortlist yet, so it could well win that prize as well. Definitely doing very well at the prize times, Alexis Wright's novel. The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride was a book quite a few of my commenters told me was either their best book of 2020 or one of their best books and I just I just see so much love for this book. Let Us Descend by Jasmine Ward is definitely worth considering. Ward receives a lot of praise for her novels and this may be the time she gets some booker recognition. Heart Be at Rest by Donald Ryan is a companion to the Irish novel of the decade and there have been some amazing authors producing amazing books in Ireland that he beat to win that prize. Garth Greenwell's Small Rain is coming in early September and is definitely something you can't rule out. Martyr by Kavid Akbar has been getting some fantastic reviews, as too has Headshot by Rita Bullwinkle, but I'm not hearing as many people talk about Headshot in regards to the booker and I'm not quite sure why. Tommy Orange's Wandering Star has been popular, more so with American readers than with readers in the UK where the booker is based, but I don't think that that excludes it from getting longlisted. Clear by Karis Davies has been very hyped and is a real booker style novel Novel. Along somewhat similar lines and themes is Whale Fall by Elizabeth O'Connor, and having read both, I think O'Connor's novel is slightly more likely to make the long list. 
Wellness by Nathan Hill has got so many fantastic reviews it certainly can't be ruled out. And a book that's only just been released and is already getting a little bit of hype is Passion Tide by Monique Roffey, who won the Costa Prize a few years ago with, with her novel Mermaid of the Black Conch. I hear so many good things about The Night Alphabet by Joelle Taylor, but if you want to be hyped by somebody, there's nobody better to be hyped by than a judge. And This Strange Eventful History by Claire Messard has been blurbed by Yi Young Lu, who said that This Strange Eventful History is a tour de force, one of those rare novels that a reader doesn't merely read, but lives through with the characters. Helen Oyeyeme has a new novel, Paracel for the Axe, and that has to be part of the conversation. And I thought Pity by Andrew McMillan was fantastic and has a really strong identity and point of view which is all the things that make something Booker catnip in my mind. A novel that didn't work for me was Hard by the Great Forest by Leo Varis de Villi, but it's a real love it or hate it novel that may do very well. I've been hearing absolutely wonderful things about The Borrowed Hills by Scott Preston, and it's a novel I want to read before I make my prediction video. Another book I'm eager to read before I predict a long list is Ingrid Persaud's second novel, The Lost Love Songs of Boise Singh. Persaud might be an author more suited to the woman's prize than the booker, but I think that they're an outrageously talented author and nobody scoffed when I suggested Alif Shafak might be long listed, who I think is also more suited to the woman's prize. A book I also think is more suited to the woman's prize, but I loved it and got to be part of the conversation is Julia by Sandra Newman. Nobody seems to be talking about the morning side by former winner of the woman's prize, Tia Aubrant, and she is surely an author who needs to be part of the discussion. Another former winner of the woman's prize with a book out is Naomi Elderman and her novel The Future. Speaking of the woman's prize, most years there's one novel from the woman's prize that appears on the Booker and Vice Versa. But one of the quirks of this year's Women's Prize is that so few of them have been released later in the eligibility window that only three of them are eligible for this year's Booker Prize. They are Restless Dolly Maunder, River East, River West, and A Trace of Sun. I'd love to see A Trace of Sun make it. I, I really enjoyed that book. Looking at some of the other books that have done well at other prizes, same Bed, Different Dreams by Ed Park is one of the finalists from this year's Pulitzer Prize, and it's the only one that is eligible. Looking at the shortlist for the most recent Goldsmith Prize, it only has one novel eligible, and that's Alan Thorell's The Future Future. It was also shortlisted for this year's George Orwell Prize for Political Fiction, along with Andrew O'Hagan's Collodian Road, Orbital by Samantha Harby, also Blackouts, James and my friends, which I've already named. Not a single novel from the Jalak Prize is eligible to be long listed for the Booker, as they were all published too early. And from the Carol Shields Prize, only Loot by Tanya James and The Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zhang are eligible. A lot of those prizes didn't announce their long lists that long ago, and there's really few books from there that are eligible for this year's Booker, so it does feel like the long list might introduce a few new books into our collective bookish consciousness. Moving on to a few novels that I think could potentially surprise some people and appear on the long list out of nowhere is The Great Divide by Christina Henriques. It has a fantastic sense of place, that novel. A lot of my fellow booktubers were predicting The Storm We Made by Vanessa Chang to make the Woman's Prize long list. Now, I don't think anybody will predict it to make the Booker Prize long list, so therefore the shit stirrer in me would love this book to be long listed. Mercury by Amy Jo Burns is doing really well in the USA and Canada. I don't know much about it, but people reading and talking about your book has to be a good sign. Annie Bot by Sierra Greer is probably my favourite novel I've read released in 2024 thus far, and despite its cover, I absolutely think it's complex enough to be long-listed. Anita de Monte Laughs Last by Shukatel Gonzalez is a fantastic novel. A real improvement on their last novel, Olga Dies Dreaming, which wasn't a bad novel at all, but probably not really the sort of novel you expect on the booker, and this one I think much more likely. Joyce Carol Oates has a new book out, Butcher, and it's a bit of a surprise, but she has never been long-listed before, so will Butcher break her booker duck? Interesting facts about space and time by Emily R. Austin seems 
less likely than quite a few of the other books I've mentioned to get longlisted. But good reviews, quality author. And I sometimes think we ascribe these qualities to booker books. And I think the reality is that most books longlisted for the booker don't have all of those qualities. Similarly, I think Piglet by Lockie Hazel, The Glutton by AJ Blakemore, and The Other Valley by Scott Alexander Howard seem quite unlikely, but are very possible books. The Road to Belhaven by Margot Livesey is fantasy that explores the human condition, which sounds very Booker and not very Booker to me at the same time. Wild House by Colin Barrett is one that's going under the radar. And while I haven't read it yet, it feels like it could be among the favourites. I simply love the title of Leif Enger's novel, I Cheerfully Refuse. I'm hearing very positive things about Held by Anne Michaels, so make sure you go down to your libraries and put that one on hold. The Bullet Swallower by Elizabeth Gonzalez James has been called Cormac McCarthy meets Gabriel Garcia Marquez if they wrote a Western, and um, that could be anything, really. There's a couple of speculative fiction options. The Ministry of Time by Kaylan Bradley and the forthcoming new Julia Armfield novel Private Rights could be longlisted. And I haven't mentioned any Aussie novels yet, so how about we have a dozen of them that are in with a shot? Stoneyard Devotional by Charlotte Woods, Eden Glassy by Melissa Lukashenko, Body Friend by Kate Braddon, Green Dot by Madeline Gray, Between You and Me by Joanna Horton, The Echoes by Evie Wilde, The Inbetweeners by Christoph, The Sitter by Angela O'Keefe, Lola in the Middle by Trent Dalton, Salt River Road by Molly Smith, The Great Undoing by Sherilyn Elsop, and Thunderhead by Miranda Darling. Following by The Lark by Helen Humphreys is a book about Henry David Thoreau, and that's either going to appeal to you or not, and I guess the judges will be in exactly the same position. I was a big fan of Moses Mackenzie's last novel, An Olive Grove in Ends, so I really hope to see Fast by the Horns make the long list. Ronan Hessian is super popular here on Booktube, and his third novel, Ghost Mountain, is eligible. It might be racial stereotyping, but he's probably an excellent author because he's Irish. I mean, we all know Irish people are excellent novel writers, so here's 17 more books by Irish authors that are eligible. The Coast Road by Alan Moran, Glorious Exploits by Farida Lennon, Exile by Amy Walsh, The Amendments by Neve Mulvey, Evening and Weekends by Ocean McKenna, My Father's House by Joseph McConnor, by Joseph O'Connor, Hagstone by Sinead Gleeson, The Alternatives by Quielin Hughes, Cross by Austin Duffy, This Is How You Remember It by Catherine Prasenka, The Plague of Souls by Mike McCormick, Mouthing by Orla McKay, I See Buildings Fall Like Lightning by Kieran Goddard, Habitat by Katrina Shine, Night Swimmers by Roshan Maguire, The Inheritance by Quaverly Madhaven, and This Is How You Remember. Oh, I've already got that in. For some reason, I am yet to mention Absolution by Alice McDermott or Family Meal by Brian Washington yet, but I guess I now have and in that vein this video is going to descend in me naming other books that are eligible that I just haven't been able to link into a narrative. Little Rot by Aquakia Maisie, Once Upon a Time There Was a Man by Peter Scholes, You Are Here by David Nichols, Enlightenment by Sarah Perry, The Safe Keep by Yale van der Walden, All Grown Up by Catherine Evans, Shaking Hands with Elvis by Paul Carroll, Leaving by Roxanne Robinson, Women and Children First by Alana Grabowski, The Limits by Nell Fasterberger, England is Mine by Nicholas Pabamassi, All Fours by Miranda July, Bird Life by Anna Smales, Jade by Ella Lee, Mother Naked by Glenn James Brown, The Fertile Earth by Ruth Vicker Rao, Beautyland by Marie Helen Bernito, Glasgow Boys by Margaret MacDonald, Great Expectation by Viston Cunningham, Poor Dear by Claire Osieski, The Lodger by Holly Pester, After Annie by Anne Quindell, The Berry Pickers by Amanda Peters, Liars by Sarah Manusco, Within Arms Reach by Anne Napolitano, The Cemetery of Untold Stories by Julia Alvarez, Mongrels by Haneko Footman, Greta and Valden by Rebecca K. Riley, Blessings by Shakwubika Iba, How I Won the Nobel Prize by Julius Taranto, Burma Sahab by Paul Thoreau, Monumenta by Lara Haworth, Scaffolding by Lauren Elkin, Spoilt Creatures by Amy Twigg, My Beloved Life by Amavinta Kumar, The New Naturals by Gabrielle Bump, 
The Anthropologist by Asi Golsava, Curandela by Iron Sun Okiyaki, After Nora by Penelope Curtis, How to Be Somebody Else by Miranda Poutany, Only Here, Only Now by Tom Newlands, Hyper by Ari Ishmael, I Will Crash by Rebecca Watson, Blue Ruin by Hari Krasru, Shanghai Landers by Julie Min, The Vulnerables by Sigrid Nunes, Determination by Tamseed Khan, Day by Michael Cunningham, Allow Me to Introduce Myself by Ogni Nababanelli, Henry Henry by Alan Bratton, Dayspring by Anthony Oliveria, A Great Country by Shalipi Somayar Gwadda, Dominoes by Phoebe McIntosh, Acts of Forgiveness by Maura Cheeks, The House of Broken Bricks by Fiona Williams, Tremor by Teju Cole, and The Museum of Failure by Thruti Umragar. If you have been counting, you will know that that is 163 possible books and i've listed them all in the description so if you've been frantically taking notes and only realized now sorry i have to be honest at this point i stopped researching i actually could have kept going and made this video bigger and even more ridiculous so if you've read a good book you think should be long listed let us know in the comments section now for anybody predicting the long list if in the approximately 0% chance that the 163 books named are all the books that are submitted, if you were to pick 13 books at random, here's the probabilities of you getting 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on books correct. So I think we can see that any booktuber who predicts three or more correct is a bit of a book genius. My job now is to go through all these books and find the best and most interesting to tell you about and to include in my guess or prediction video and tell you about them in a bit more detail, make a bit more of a considered video and something a little bit less info dumpy than this video. I would love to thank my wonderful Patreons for their support. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider signing up. You can also subscribe to this channel, like this video or share it around. All that sort of stuff really helps this channel grow. So I, you know, I really appreciate any support I get. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.